Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. It's good to see everybody. Thank you, Jesus. It's good to be with you. I um, want to let you know tonight is our uh, network celebration with the Metro Equipping Coalition, MEC. Uh, this is a uh, cooperative effort between, you could put me up a little bit now, maybe, if possible. Uh, cooperative effort between uh, our church network, Gospel Mission Network, and two other networks in our Northeast region coming together to continue to learn about the way of Christ and his apostles. And uh, we're going to be focused tonight on having a uh, communion meal, uh, a meal uh, that we're celebrating the body and blood of Jesus, and then also um, learning about the importance of the gathering. Uh, I have a lot of like reverb or something going on, so maybe you can return it to what normally uh, is. Thank you. And um, so everybody is invited to this event tonight uh, or this afternoon. It starts at uh, 2.45. We're asking people to arrive. It is potluck, so if you are registered, be sure to bring something. There's over 100 people uh, coming this evening to participate in the meal, in the gathering. Also, if you have not registered yet, you can do that. You can go to our website or go to the app, and you'll see right under events. Just click the MEC Network Celebration, and you can register. It's free to register. And we encourage you to come out because we're learning together with other ministries how to follow Jesus and the traditions of the first century church. And so we're very excited about it. There's an article there that we're also asking that people would read, especially the first 13 pages of it. Um, not mandatory, but it'll enrich your time tonight because we're going to have a lot of discussion tonight. Um, so it's right in Clifton, and again, the address is right there on Hazlitt Avenue. I believe it's Hazlitt in uh, Clifton. Hazel, Hazel, thank you. Hazlitt's a city, um, uh, Hazel Avenue, and so we encourage you to come out. We, we have a great response for it. We have uh, like 80 people uh, from our ministry alone that are, uh, that are coming, and so I thank God for that. So you're all invited. Um, to experience. And so we're not going to be doing the Lord's Supper here in this service this morning. We're going to be doing it this afternoon. And uh, uh, it's, good, it's going to be great. Amen? Amen. So praise God. So uh, also tonight at uh, 630 is the youth ministry. Uh, so I'm so excited about what God is doing. The, 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 the youth have just, uh, Michael and Anthony and Sierra have been doing a great job. Don't let your children miss uh, tonight. Um, it is at their house, so again, you just go to the event on the website or on the app, click it, you can uh, click a button there to get their address uh, at their home. And uh, next week is the women's ministry. This, this Saturday coming oh, up. This Saturday, yeah. 10 a.m. ladies in the back yeah. for our women's meeting. Make sure you come on out for that. Amen, amen. And uh, also, uh, try to save the date, and well, not even save the date, but try to register for the One Conference, if you're able to, in Connecticut. And uh, again, those who have asked, I'll be ministering Friday evening and uh, Saturday morning uh, with New, New England Prayer Center. Again, Sunday uh, evening, uh, Jason Upton, that may be hard for a bunch of people, but Jason Upton's an amazing prophetic worshiper, and uh, it'll be dedicated to uh, us entering the presence of God uh, with, uh, with worship led by Jason Upton. So we're looking forward to that. And uh, praise God. Amen? Amen. All right. Awesome. Ready to give to Jesus? Amen. amen. Let's, let's give to Jesus. Remember, this is funding the work of the Great Commission. Amen? Uh, we're, we're, not, we're, not, we're not taking offerings to, um, uh, to, to just support some sort of organization. Uh, this is the church. This is his missional people. And so let's be found faithful to bring our tithe and offering uh, to the Lord. Uh, offerings that are uh, equal to the to the New Testament pictures of giving by grace. Amen? All right, Pastor Kate, can you tell them how they can do that? Sure. Uh, the easiest way is through your mobile phone. You can take a picture of that little QR code on the screen, and we'll take you to a series of menus that you just enter your information. Or you can give online at www. I don't even say that anymore. I want grace.org uh, and go to the give button. Or you could do it on the app, which is the super easiest way because all of your information is already there. Um, or you can give the old-fashioned way. You can make checks out to Abundant Grace Christian Church. Um, or you can give cash. You just need to ask an usher for an envelope. Also want to let you know that uh, this weekend, or this, yeah, this weekend, I'll be ministering in Roselle, New Jersey. 
uh, with a church network there at a leadership conference. But the Friday, uh, April 12th, Friday, April 12th, is a um, worship service that's open to everyone. So if you're interested in that, just send an email to contact at iwantgrace.org and uh, we'll get you the information. It's at the Agape Worship Center in Roselle, New Jersey from 7 to, to 9 p.m. So uh, that'll be going on. And then also um, let you know about this now because I want you to save the date. May 19th, May 19th. May 19th, uh, David Tyree and his wife uh, will be coming to minister for couples, married, um, couples. married couples, right? Marriage. This is the those who are married, right? And uh, and if you are in the preparation of pre-marriage counseling or coaching, then you're also welcome to come to that too. Uh, but it's not just for people dating, okay? It's for people who are either engaged or are uh, married. Now, for those who don't know David Tyree, you probably will know him if you are a sports fan. Uh, he is the former Giants player who won the Super Bowl with a helmet catch. Uh, and so uh, he's a wonderful man of God. We're working together now. He is, uh, has uh, 13 house churches uh, that he's working with. And uh, so God is, do I told you, God is doing things in the land. I had a four-hour meeting with him this week and uh, with him and his wife and just really, really humble and beautiful and God doing powerful things. So uh, I don't want you to miss, if, if you are married or engaged, you, you try to mark uh, May 19th. It's a Sunday evening at uh, 6.30 p.m. We'll be here in the sanctuary. Amen? Amen? All right. Praise God. All right. Did we do the offer? We did. We didn't pray for the offering yet, though. All right. Go ahead, Pastor Kate. Father, we just thank you so much, Lord God, for all of these gifts, Lord God. It's just a portion, Lord, of all the great things that you've given us, especially your son. But I just pray this morning that you would multiply it, Lord God, for your kingdom. We know time is short, Lord, and we are just eager to see, Lord, what you're going to do, Lord, with all of us, Lord, and all of us together as a body. Yes, Lord. We just thank you for it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Okay, open up your Bibles. Thank you, Lord. Open up your Bibles um, and... Uh, well, I'll, 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 I'll share, and then we'll, we'll, we'll go, because I'm not sure where to go yet first. Um, so you can see the relevancy of the title of today's message, right? right. What to do when everything shakes. Um, it sh yeah, it's okay. So um, when we are in a stage here uh, where uh, society and the church are pretty much uh, getting a little unnerved, Right? Um, I don't know if you've seen even USA Today reports, secular news. They're bringing up Jesus. They're bringing up the Bible. They're bringing up questions are, are these prophetic fulfillments of the end times? Um, and then within the church, there's a lot of prophetic chatter, a lot of messages of what people are saying. And uh, you're listening possibly to a lot of things. I want to let you know that um, I did not listen to uh, some of the links and some of the things that you guys sent me uh, prior to this message. I chose not to. I did not feel I should. I just wanted to see the Word of God. I didn't want some other things in my brain um, uh, when I was listening to this message today. Um, because there's a lot of people who say they know for sure and they don't know for sure. And other people are saying that, no, this is this and this is that. And then sometimes I'll, you know, Pastor Kate and I were talking that, you know, we have a very Western American view because there's an earthquake in New Jersey, everybody. But what about the earthquake in Taiwan? What about the earthquake and the tsunamis? What about the famines and pestilences in other places? And somehow they don't hit our news. And so I think that we've got to have a global perspective. Not a northeastern perspective, not a not a not an American perspective. I think we need to have a perspective that is global and that is also heavenly. Yeah. All right, because uh, what what you know, some people are very unnerved. Oh my gosh, there was an earthquake! In Did anybody feel it, by the way? How many people felt you felt it? Yeah, it was kind of cool, right? Um, <laughs> well, you know, because nobody was hurt, right? And then, you know, you don't want anybody to be hurt. You don't want anybody to have any problem. But you know, it was just kind of cool to feel the power of the earth shake. Uh, I personally have never felt uh, an earthquake before, and um, I'm, I'm sure that people who have experienced uh, extreme earthquakes would be kind of upset with me right now uh, because it's it's not fun. It's scary, right? And so, uh, but this was just a little this was just a little tremor. But the little tremor can put you in awe 
of how much power does it take to shake earth. So I, I can't even imagine, you know, because when you taste it a little bit, it's kind of like, wow, that was really interesting. That was kind of a, um, you know, an experience. But, but now you feel that power greater and greater and greater. What happens? It moves from feeling, oh, that was kind of novel and, and wow, never experienced that, to fear. You, are, are, you, are you getting the progression? Well, it's kind of like that with God. You experience God just a little bit, it may be kind of novel. But you begin to get closer and closer and closer to God and experience Him at deeper levels. It's no longer novel. It's fearful. It's fearful. Because the power uh, that, that, that He is, is beyond our comprehension. And, and many times people are like, is there even a God? And then you can feel his power move, and you're saying, my goodness, how could I even question that? So, so you know, I, I, I want to I wanna share a, a, a statement about a lot of the prophetic things. Now, not only the earthquake, but we also have tomorrow a solar eclipse. Now, the earthquake in New Jersey hasn't happened since 1886, I believe, or 84. This building was built in 1888. So, you know, it's 200-plus it's, it's years um, since... New Jersey has experienced that. So yeah, that's kind of, you know, momentous, right? But now we have the idea of, uh, we have the idea of um, a solar eclipse coming um, that's, that's also has some unique characteristics to it. And, and, and the news, uh, you know, is saying to get water, you know, don't go out. And, and we're not even in the belt of the, uh, of the eclipse, right? Um, there's a band that's moving through, and, and there's a lot of postulation, a lot of thought, a lot of ideas about uh, the, 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 the location of it and the, the, the eclipse that happened in 2017 and, and how maybe many of you have seen that it kind of makes the shape of an X and what cities are it, is it in. And, and then, you know, 2017, referring to Salem, 2024, now referring to Nineveh and the cities of Nineveh. And, uh, you know, so there's a lot of things about this. So what, what, what I feel very comfortable to tell you is, is not to be so concerned about the specifics. Because the specifics can be interpreted many different ways. Now, I'm not denying the significance of specifics. But I am pastorally shepherding you to be careful about the interpretation of the specifics. Because sometimes people will take a specific element of a major prophetic sign and start to misapply it or misunderstand it, or we begin to lose sight of the total movement of what God is saying. Amen? So having said that, uh, not ne neither confirming nor denying some of the specifics that are out there now, because it takes study. It takes a lot of study in Scripture to be able to, and others have studied the scripture, and they may be coming and saying, this means this, but you don't know if they've studied or if, if, if they've just, you know, saying, wow, look at the coincidence of this and that. And I want to be very, very careful because of the warnings of the scripture concerning even the elect being deceived. Even the elect, the Bible says, will be deceived. So, so I, I am confirming the prophetic nature of the events taking place, but I am going to be conservative and careful and cautious about understanding or interpreting sometimes the specific elements of those things. Why? Because I'd rather do some research, I'd rather really understand it, and not because it showed up on a YouTube fan page that, and it was a video that looked compelling to say, okay, that's the truth. I, I need to be more responsible in speaking to you about these things than that. Amen. Amen? Okay. Now, having said that, let's not look at the specifics right now, but let's look at the patterned movement of things, the pattern movement of things, the escalation of things, the increasing number of things. Let's look, at the, let's look at the signs as to the level that Jesus Christ gave us. When you look at just the level of what the Word says, can you say this with me? It's enough. Amen. See, I, I don't need to go into granular level uh, numerology in order to understand, you know, the study of numbers and their symbolism in Scripture, which I'm not saying does not have value. I'm just saying I don't need that. If Jesus said, when you see earthquakes, famines, pestilences, and wars, and rumors of wars, that's not a lot of detail. Yes, right. right? That should be enough. Amen. That should be enough to wake us up. That should be enough to receive the prophetic word of Scripture 
but a lot of hearts need the, oh my gosh, it's this. People are, are, are moved by some sign in the sky saying to repent. Jesus said it when he first arrived in ministry. He said, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He sent John the Baptist as a precursor to Jesus, and he said what? Repent. And what has every message been about? Repent. But now because of a shadow on the earth, some people say, oh boy, you think we should repent? <laughs> I want to tell you that there are people who are moved by signs, and then there are people who are moved by the word. Amen. Which moves God? See, people are going to be moved, brothers and sisters. They're going to be moved. Their hearts are going to fail them. They're going to see signs in the sky, but it doesn't mean that they're okay. The church has to prepare not to be moved by the sign, but to be moved by the word that told us about the sign. That is a much better health indication of you and I in the spirit. That's a much better indication of how healthy and how well we are with God. Do you know that signs are often for an unbelieving generation? Jesus said, no sign will be given except the son of Jonah. The Jews were seeking after a sign. Let us hear his word. Yes, then when the sign comes, you're not moved the way others are moved. You're kind of like, whoa, that's pretty interesting. But I already knew that. It's the people who are not reading the word of God, not pursuing God, that begin to realize, oh, maybe my atheism isn't so secure. Maybe my, my, you know, the agnostics and, and agnosticism, maybe, may, you know, the, may, maybe, maybe that's not a great plan. Maybe my trust in the things that I used to trust in may not be a good thing. And these signs do shake people into awakenings. But those who are awakened shouldn't be moved by the signs. They should be moved by the Jesus who spoke the prophetic words. Amen? Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. So if the world is shaken, what's happening to us? There's a question that I, you know, kind of was, was coming to me, you know, and circling around and thinking is, you know, what makes me shake? Does judgment make you shake? Why? Why does judgment make us shake? Well, on one level, because it's scary. The reality that God is going to judge and that you begin to see the reality of that righteous judgment on evil, that will unnerve anyone, amen? But that doesn't mean that you need to shake in the same way as somebody who is being judged for the unrighteousness. Hallelujah. Go to Matthew chapter 24, verse 6, please. Now, I've got a lot of verses to go through. You may, the media team may be a little bit delayed in going through them, and that's okay. Uh, because the computer is slow, or you may be delayed in getting to all of them in your Bible, but praise God, the message is being recorded. It's streaming live on the app right now, and you're able to go back. In addition, very soon, guys, I, I, I shared with you that, that we, we create studies on almost every message, uh, uh, fairly, fairly, um, uh, fairly robust studies that have all the scriptures and and uh, questions and, and, and uh, recaps of the message and summary learning points. These are studied in all of our house churches, so we encourage you to, to get that. But even if you're not in one, you're going to be able to have access to them soon on a website. So that's kind of great. Uh, but 24, Matthew 24, verse 6, the, the Bible says, see, now I knew where to start. Matthew 24, 24 verse 6, Jesus is speaking about being careful um, that no one deceives you. In fact, let's look at, let's look at beginning at uh, verse 3, please. 24, verse 3. It says, Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? I want you to look at this now, and I want you to see that it's speaking about the end of the what? This is not the destruction of all things. That's a whole thing that I don't have time to talk about this morning, but I, I, I well, maybe I'll share a little bit, but we'll see how we do. It says, verse number four, and Jesus answered and said to them, take heed that no one deceives you. You see, I want you to see the very first response of Jesus to the question. The question is when, right? The question is when, and the question is what signs? Tell us when, and what will be the sign? Tell us when and tell us the sign of the when. That was the concern of the people. 
That's what the disciples, that's what the followers were thinking about. When? What do you think the concern right now is? When? 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 Is it pre-tribulation, mid-tribulation, post-tribulation? Where in the seven years of the end of the tribulation are we going to be here? How long will Christians be here? Uh, you know, what, what about the millennium and the thousand-year reign? What are all these things of eschatology of the end times? We are more concerned about the when. The first thing that Jesus Christ, the good shepherd, says is not answering the question of when. He says, take heed. That no one deceives you. The first thing he brings up is deception. Wow. The first thing Jesus brings up is deception. Take heed that no one deceives you. And Jesus answered and said to them, take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many and will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not. Not my words. The focus of the internet, often the focus of many things, uh, it is taking off the focus of the shepherding of Jesus. Did you know that, that a lot of things that Christians are reading are actually making them troubled? But Jesus is leading us to being not troubled? There's a pathway of the believer that says, wow, we understand the God-level seriousness of things that are happening. And yes, we are closer to the end than we've ever been. We should not relax. We should realize the end is near. And you say, when? Don't worry about that. Let's worry about not being deceived. Let's worry about not being troubled. The scripture is a very different place than the rhetoric of the world. Satan wants people in fear rather than being in preparation. It's an amazing thing about people who won't repent. One of the things about the book of Revelation that shocked me is that those who could have had time to repent didn't repent. And even when things got worse, they still didn't repent. And when things even got worse, you'd think, how could you not repent? They still reviled him. They still rejected him. And they would not repent. I want to tell you, the Bible says, and I'll maybe go to it in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 18, the way to holiness is ever growing brighter. The way to evil is growing worse. I'm telling you, the signs of the times need to be understood. But they're not the thing that is going to determine whether someone is saved or not. It's the response to the signs. It's the response to them. Not that they're just happening. Amen? So when, when, when the world may be getting afraid and beginning to look at Jesus, this is good. This is good. When the world is looking and those who are not prepared to leave earth, those who have still have their sins, those who have not received his grace, those who are not with Jesus, they should be afraid. And, and these signs cause men's heart to fail. These things are the coming. There are birth pangs of the earth happening now. And the judgment of God that he speaks of is happening now. But not just tomorrow on April 8th with a solar eclipse. Not just with an earthquake in New Jersey. They have been happening since Jesus Christ was risen. But like... A woman's labor, they're getting more intense, they're getting closer together, and, and, and it's showing the movement of these things is more important than just an isolated event. Amen? Amen? That's why if you do, if you do research through, you know, are, things getting, are things getting more lawless? Yes. Some people say, oh, no, it was always like this. We just have the internet. No. No. I love Lucy, Ricardo and Lucy didn't even sleep in the same bed on, on TV. Right. Yep. Yeah. They were still TV. Today in public schools, in many schools, teachers are allowing kids to curse with no, with, with no consequence and nothing. I was speaking to somebody, I don't want to say who or about what, but I was absolutely shocked about the, the sexual education coming to a certain uh, people group. I, I was shocked. 
things are getting more lawless. So yes, should people be awakened? Yes. Should we realize that these things are pointing to the coming of Jesus Christ? Yes. But these are for the unbelievers. The church should not be troubled, nor should we be it. Oh my gosh, what's happening? Because when the church is having the same reaction as the people who are not yet saved, how do you say that? That's a problem. That, 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 that's how you say that. that, that, that that's a problem. Amen? Our job is to minister to those that may be awakening and say, yes, this is real. And, and, and if somebody says, well, but is it really going through these cities and is it really going through that? It's like, dude, wake up. There's an earthquake. There's a soul. There's a this. There's a that. There's all these things pointing to this. Even if you don't have details, you got a massive testimony of nature crying out for the return of Jesus Christ. you got a massive, undeniable witness, a great cloud of witnesses. And it isn't just judgment. God is not just bringing people to, to, to him because of judgment and signs like this. He is also bringing to him people because of his love. He's bringing to people the message of forgiveness, that you don't have to die. But you know, people are more moved by, oh my gosh, I'm going to die, rather than being moved by, I don't have to die. That's crazy, isn't it? Let's just go back to 24. Look what it says. Take heed that no one deceives you. Verse 6 now. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. Don't be deceived. The end is not yet. You're going to see these things moving. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be what? Famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. They're not the sorrows. They're the beginning of sorrows. These things are not the end is what I'm saying. These things are, isn't the complete list. This is the beginning of what? Folks, we've got to understand something about the message of the gospel, and it is, it's is got stuff in it that we've got to realize is true, that we've got to realize is part of the canon of scripture. We've got to realize that God himself is revealing that there are sorrows coming. And if hearts begin to fail at the beginning of sorrows, what do you think is going to happen when things continue to progress? Now, again, we may be thinking everything is pretty good here in America. We don't have much persecution. We're pretty much rich compared to the rest of the world. You know that, right? Like you're extremely wealthy. Extremely wealthy we are in this country as compared. Uh, the amount of wealth that the average American lives with is two out of 100 in the world. You're among the 2% in the whole world. That's why there's going to be judgment that God says, you were that rich and you didn't help feed me. You didn't help clothe me. You fed it on yourself. You bought bigger houses. You, you were caught up. You, you weren't fruit bearers. You weren't good ground. We're going to be shocked at the end about judgment. Oh, God, please help me keep my $5 million house. Oh, dear. But you see, it's so good because the church also begins to awaken because what there's a grace when these things kind of happen that people start to say, my goodness, this is real. Things on earth can change in a second. You see, but we didn't hear much about the earthquake in Taiwan, which was much more significant. Toppled buildings over. People lost their lives. But what is God saying? What is the Spirit saying? The Spirit is saying that there are signs happening on the earth. But you know what scares me? These signs have been happening, and yes, they're getting more intense, and most people aren't even moved. They say, well, that's just normal life. Those are actually the signs of His coming back. Did you ever hear people say, well, if God is a loving God, then how come all these wars and all these diseases and all these famines? You've got to read the Bible. God is saying those things are not an indication of his lack of love. Those are an indication of his coming judgment. The God that they are accusing of not being loving is the God who is manifesting himself as a judge over sin. 
In other words, sinners are saying, well, how could God judge me if he's love? What a misunderstanding of God. During this hour, God sends Jesus Christ to show we are in sin. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit. And I'm speaking this to you because you got to hear it. Because in Pentecostal charismatic circles, we get moved by, by rubies appearing and, and, and gold dust and clouds. And listen, praise God for when those things are genuine. That's like, you know, cool, right? When those things are genuine. But actually, the Bible is telling us to look at other things that are more foundational. Why? The Holy Spirit... The very first ministry is not making a cloud. The very first ministry to man is what? Conviction of sin. To convict the world of sin. See, but we don't like that. To convict the world of righteousness and to convict the world of judgment. You see, if you put it together, and this is the way it says, okay, you got to know that we're not righteous. Here's what God's righteousness is, and here's the judgment on the difference. Now, I'm not negating the supernatural. I'm not negating the wonderful breakouts of, of God's heavenly beauty, of fragrances and different manifestations of the kingdom. What I'm saying is that's not the focus. Amen? And you could be deceived by certain things like that. And I want us, and I need to tell you, we need to be rooted in the real ministry of Jesus Christ. Because while many would say, wow, I saw such and such happening at such and such service, no repentance. No conviction of sin. The Holy Spirit is to reveal Jesus. And you know who Jesus is? He's judge of the living and of the dead. He's Lord of all. Yes, praise God that he's our friend. Thank you, God, that he's the grace of God. But you can't get f too familiar with Jesus that you're no longer thankful that he rescued us. Amen? Amen? It says here, wars and rumors of wars, see that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. These are not things that we can pray, oh, please don't let them happen. These are things that must come to pass. Did you hear that? Don't be in la-la land that says, well, my life is going to be all oh, so peachy. The Christian life is a life of warriorship. It is a life of courage. It is a life of steadfastness. It is a life of devotion. It is a life of sacrifice. It is a life that is uncommon. It is a life the flesh hates. And that's why the reality is that there are four kinds of seeds. There are four kinds of seeds. The second kind of seed, four kinds of grounds rather, not seeds, only one kind of seed. <laughs> Got that thing all wrong when I was saying that. Four kinds of grounds. Jesus said it's the parable of the sower. And that second ground, they loved God, it looked like. They were worshiping God. They were over the top thankful for God until persecution comes, until trouble comes. You see, folks, what's actually happening on the earth is a separation of sheep and goats in essence before the true separation. You see, people often come to God like, God, I want you to give me everything I want. God is saying, I love you. I will give you more than you could desire. But you have to die. You have to die with me on the cross. Your own nature has to die. Your, your sin nature has to die. Will you come with me? You need to sell everything. You need to sell everything. You need to come and follow me. You need to receive me as Lord. Will you still come? Oh, no, 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 I'm not going to come, no. But by the way, God, can I still have all the good stuff? This is not the life that Jesus Christ ultimately died to give you. He gave you eternal life, which means that the life he gives you in eternity is starting here. The moment you receive him. You got eternal life right now and the blessings of that covenant and the blessings of God being with you and the blessings of the new covenant in Christ are active now. That's why we can be healed. That's why we can be at peace. That's why we can operate with, with the wonderful promises of God. But let us not forget that actually we're not staying here. We're not staying here. We're not staying here. We got to get an eternity mindset that we're actually not staying here. And so when you see certain things going down, people are like, what's going on? The judgment of God is happening in the earth, moving right now. You say, where? Guys, 
the curse is still operating on the earth. The curse of law and sin and death is still operating. From Genesis 3, it's been operating until now. And it's still operating. That's why people, we've got to come out. America has to come out. Other countries has to come out of being anesthetized. Of be, I finally got that word right. Did I say that right? Yeah. Oh, I got it right. So you know, we have to come out of, be, of, of, of being sleepy, a slumbering spirit. Jesus is closer to his second return today than he was yesterday. More than 2,000 years have passed. Listen, I... I, 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 I understand we want to know when, but come on, let's focus on not being deceived so that we can see the signs and so that we'll prepare. Is that making sense? So don't fight with each other. I, we, 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 know, we know wonderful uh, uh, servants of God, well studied uh, that love God, filled with His Spirit, but they don't quite understand or agree with each other on the view of when Jesus is coming back. You know what that says to me? Let's keep studying. Yeah. Not arguing. Let's keep studying. But let our study be focused upon what He said. So Jesus is more concerned about us seeing the signs properly so that we're not deceived and thinking everything is okay when it's not. But yet He's also describing, in my view that um, we need to be thinking about the right things. Why? Because he said not to be troubled. What do you do when everything is shaken? You've got to have your mind on the right thing. You've got to have your heart in the right place. You've got to be prepared, praise God. Matthew 24, back to there. Matthew 24. It says, for nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, which are diseases, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Now, I don't want to debate the timing, but I'm going to tell you, you had to be on earth in order for them to kill you. I want to go there a little bit, but I'm not. <laughs> they will deliver you up to tribulation. Trouble, right? And what are they going to do? Kill you. And what? You will be what? Hated by all nations for my name's sake. The signs of the end is that the Christians are going to get more devoted and the hater against Christianity more hateful. This is why the separation of the sheep and goats will happen upon the second judgment. It will happen when Jesus comes. But I'm telling you, right now, the tribulation, the signs, the wonders in the sky, the stars, the sun, the moon, and all of the things and the curses of the earth right now are revealing the hearts of men. It'll be revealed later, but it's kind of already being shown. Is this making sense? What is it revealing about your heart? Do you get afraid for a moment and then you go back to your normal life? Do you get inspired on Sunday morning in that time the Holy Spirit is really speaking to hearts and you have tears in your eyes, but by Wednesday night you don't even think about it? You've been moved by moments of God's grace, but the movement of your life is actually rejection of His Word. Yikes. Do you and I have been saved for 20 plus years and, and things like that? Are we afraid? Listen, there's a part of the human soul that is going to be like a little bit like, whoa. I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about, you know, there being an earthquake and people going. That's not, the, that's not the fear I'm speaking about. I'm not speaking about the concern about a market crashing and things that, you know, happening and saying, how are we going to... I'm not talking about a, a, a concern of diseases and various things coming. I'm talking about the general deeper state of your being. Emotions kind of go up and down, don't they? So I'm not talking about, well, you have a bad day and your emotions were a little fearful. I'm talking about deeper than that. Are you troubled inside? Or do you have an assurance that says, well, it may
may be tribulation coming. And I may be in the beginning or the middle of the sorrows of some sort. But I know everything's going to be all right. Are, are you getting the difference? I don't want you to think that because you got afraid of an earthquake that you said, I'm unsaved. It's not what I'm saying. But I am saying that if you have a deep-rooted fear focused on the end of things and fearing the judgment of God, something can be strengthened in you. Something can be made stronger in you. The assurance and the peace and the comfort of God can be made stronger in you so that you won't shake. Amen? They will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you, and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. And they, then many will be what? They will be what? They will betray one another and will hate one another. This is already happening. This has happened. This is happening now. Then many false prophets will rise up and what? Do you see the second time that he says it? They're asking when, and he's talking about don't be deceived. Here are the real things that are going to happen, but there's going to be false prophets that come up. I want to guard you. Do not receive something on YouTube or the Internet because it had a lot of likes. Please. Amen. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying likes don't equal truth. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached. No, I'm sorry. Skipping ahead. And they, then they, many will be offended, will betray one another, and will hate one another. If, you want, if you're concerned about keeping your friends, if you're concerned about popularity, let me tell you, in these end days, you're done. I mean, I don't know how else to say it. If that's your concern... That you don't want to tell people about a coming judgment that their life may be rescued because you may not be liked. You are no witness at all. You are no witness at all. A witness is somebody who says, I know these things are coming and I know that you need to be warned. And I'm warning you because God loves you and I'm trying to bring you to his grace before the end of the age. But most of us don't even care. Do we even believe in the end? Do you even believe in hell? Do we believe it so much that there's an urgency that says, wow, we all must become preachers at some level? Amen. Like people talking to people about Jesus. Amen. I'm telling you, these things should cause our house churches not to have addition, but a multiplication that people say, what in the world's going on? Amen? Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Why? Because people are looking for comfort. Yeah. And if we're not comfort comforted, how do we expect them to be comforted? You know, it's kind of like this. Hey, do you want to come into the house church? Because we're freaking out too. <laughs> You're afraid and we're afraid. How about we be afraid together? Only we'll all bring food and have a good time. Oh That's not what we're talking That's about. Right. Right. We're talking about a different kind of people that were hidden in a cave, that, that, were, that were going over the scriptures and were saying, wow, this, this, this is his body. This makes us okay. No matter what happens. They were under the threat of Romans finding them right there. They were under the threat of arrest, and they were still getting baptized. Right. Today, it's a, it's, it's a wonderful party. But come on, let's not forget that, that God said that the nations are going to hate us. Christianity is the most hated religion in Judaism. If you look at Judaism and you look at Christianity, the whole world's against them. whole world's against them. You got to look at certain things. Listen, during Black Lives Matter and during all these things, right? And, and there's focus on all these reparations and, and all the critical race theories and all these things, right? What about the Jews? Silence. What about the hatred, the bigotry, the persecution of the chosen nation of Israel? Do people even care? They don't care. They don't even know. They don't even know. I didn't even know half the time. I was spending time with a wonderful rabbi, and he was telling me how they're often afraid sometimes in some place to walk down the street. But people don't know. These are God's people. But you see, the righteousness on the earth says, you know, take care of them, but forget about them. Why is it so quiet in here? I'm preaching. I'm preaching good? The, 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 the hatred is spiritual against Israel. 
Not natural. Spiritual. What happened in the Holocaust was spiritual. Spiritual. What happened in Egypt? Spiritual. It's all spiritual. And Christianity is the most persecuted place. Look, even in Islam, many things are going on that are not right, but silence. Why? Fear. It just got quieter. The real Christian message means, I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. Should we respect everyone? Yes. Should we love everyone? Yes. Have you heard me say this 50 times? Yes. Should we be against people in different faith systems? No. We should be for them. We should be praying for them. We should be loving them. But that does not mean that Jesus Christ stops being Lord. He must be Lord. If he is not your Lord, you are not in a place of safety come judgment. You must be a fully devoted disciple, not a cafeteria plan that says, I like this and I don't like that. Hallelujah. Look at this. Verse 12, and because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will what? The love of many will what? That meant that there were people who, listen, I know that this flies in the face of a lot of stuff, and you got to work things out. You're a believer. you got to read the Scripture. But just look at this. Lawlessness will abound. You know what lawlessness is? It means the life and actions and approval of things that are against the ways of God. Lawlessness will what? Abound. The love of many will grow cold. You know what this tells me about love? It grows. It moves. It changes. It develops. It waxes and it wanes. Oh, I love God. What about today? What about five years ago? You know, a lot of people, they love God more than when they first got saved than they do now. They were on fire. They were going to church all the time. And then little by little by little, they don't go to church all the time. They're not reading their Bible all the time. They're really not praying. Something is spiritually wrong. Your love isn't growing. It's growing cold. Most people have not matured in Christ because they don't love God. Because when your love is growing, your obedience grows. When your love grows, your devotion grows. When your love grows, your service grows. You know why a lot of people are still not serving God with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength, or even at all? Because their love is not of that level that says, I got to do something for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have to assess where you are. Paul the Apostle said, examine to see if you're in the faith. I'm telling you, these are the things that we must be warned of. But who's speaking about this? This is what Jesus spoke about. Whether there's something going on with this solar eclipse or, or the earthquakes or the this and that that are specifically saying Jesus Christ is coming soon. We already know he's coming soon. What are you going to do about it? How are you going to protect your heart? The love of many will grow cold. The heart grows colder and colder and colder and it can become a heart of stone and become reprobate. God is married to the backslider, praise God, but he warns about the heart growing so cold that it no longer has any conscious response, no more consciousness, no more, no more, uh, what's the word? Um, uh, I can't think of the word in in, in the verse. Ah, their consciences are seared. Their consciences are seared. They don't care, they don't care, they don't care, they don't care. Guys, This is what Jesus warned about because he said, when you see these signs, you got to be concerned about this. Verse 13. Come on, go ahead and read it for us. But he who... Wow. 
What does a real believer look like? I want to tell you that, that at the heart of the mission of this ministry is to create fully devoted disciples who will fulfill the Great Commission like the early church from house to house. Why? Because we see the times. We see the signs. God is not looking for people who are afraid. God is looking for people who are diligent to do what he's called us to do until he comes back. He is looking for a pure and spotless bride. He's looking for fully devoted Christians. Amen? Listen, I think that it's absolutely great when ministries grow and they're able to have coffee shops and bookstores and when they're able to have these kinds. I think that's great. It's wonderful, right? You know? You, you heard about the, the, uh, the coffee shop that Moses uh, planted? Hebrews. Hebrews. <laughs> he, he Hebrews. He some, some, some of you got that. Yeah, yeah. Somebody else said they named it Holy Ground, right? Listen, I'm not coming against being prosperous or having big buildings. What I need to help you understand is that our Christianity must be more rooted in the, in the idea of I am willing and I am able to go through the sorrows with endurance. That should be the bigger focus. That should be the bigger focus. Hallelujah. He who endures to the end shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations. And then the end will come. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken by Daniel the prophet standing in the holy place, whoever reads, let him understand. Then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let him who is on the mount... Um, on the housetop, not go down to take anything out of his house. And let him who is in the field not go back to get his clothes. But woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing babies in those days. Exclamation mark. And pray that your flight may not be in winter or on the Sabbath. For then there will be great tribulation such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time. No, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. We must be here, at least some portion of it, in order to flee. For God to warn us and say, uh, pray that it is not a time that you're pregnant. Don't go down to the house. What am I saying? The church must begin to build a mindset that says we... I don't know how exactly what, the, I don't, I'm not going to preach that now. I know this. God is saying to build endurance yes. to the church. Yes. Do you know what endurance means? It means you don't stop. You know what endurance means? You don't give up. You know what endurance means? It means you finish what you started yes. no matter the difficulty. Jesus. So if you want a gospel that says, well, Jesus, just rescue me out of every trouble, God's saying, no, I'm going to demonstrate who you are. In the midst of the tribulation. Uh, I want to give you, I want to get, I got to close this up here, but I mean, you know, we could do a whole seminar for a week straight, just developing, you know, five weeks straight, just developing these ideas. But I want you to see, it says, it says here in, uh, in verse number 21, For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world, until this time, no, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were what? Shortened. No flesh would be. Verse 23, then if anyone says you, look, here is the Christ, or there, do not believe it. For false Christs and false prophets will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive. Did you hear that? Yeah. I need you to hear it. Listen, he's going back to the deception again. Then, then if anyone says you, look, here's the, do you know that people have already been on the earth saying that they're the Christ? Already this has been happening. It says, do not believe it for false Christs. Did you hear that? Oh, boy. And false prophets will rise and show what? Great signs and what? 
They have a purpose. If possible, even the elect. Why? Because the elect were not rooted in the voice of the shepherd. You've got to hear the voice of the shepherd. The thing that I want to shepherd you, and I believe God is leading me to shepherd you, is do not shake at what you hear the world say. Shake at what you hear God say. Then you won't shake when the earth is shaken. Amen? Hallelujah. But are things being shaken? Am I talking about just physical earthquakes? See, Jesus is telling us about his signs, and then he's telling us that there will be false signs. Verse 26, therefore, if they say to you, look, he is in the desert, do not go out. Or look, he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For as the lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. For wherever the carcass is, there the eagles will be gathered together. Oh, my goodness. He is less concerned in this text about telling us the time frame as he is about protecting us until the time comes. Are you grabbing this? Are you getting this? So what do you do when you hear certain things? Well, I have a parking lot. It's a big parking lot. And I'll hear something very compelling that seems scripturally true, but I don't know. I put it in the parking lot. I I don't want to reject that thing because God may show me in the scripture and this and that, and I may not be mature enough to handle it yet. There's a lot of people with a lot of deep revelation that I'm not ready to receive yet. Doesn't make it wrong. It means I won't do the right thing with it. Amen? Amen? Is your pastor telling you that I'm unqualified to receive many things? Yep. I am. I am. I am not ready to scripturally rightly divide certain events in our world with scripture yet in every topic of the Bible. Therefore, I can't receive it. Because listen, whatever I receive without having the proper preparation in my heart and mind and life, it can become a very dangerous thing. But what is the dangerous thing? Satan can use the thing you're not rooted in and the thing you don't really understand to be the very beginning of the deception that he leads you in. Therefore, walk in the Lord as you've received him. Established, rooted, built up in him. So what's my focus? My focus is not to say, this is right and that's wrong, this is right and that's wrong. It's more like this. My focus is to be established. As I get more established, listen, there are things that I do understand. I will not preach them to you. I will not share them with you. I have seen things. I have heard things. I have studied things. I will not share them. Why? Because I don't want to put you at risk. Because just because he showed me something doesn't mean that you're going to be able to handle it. Amen? Amen? Also, some things you may walk away and say, Pastor, lost it. Pastor, how could you say this? You would be misunderstood because you don't know about the five books of the Bible and the perfect pattern that's pointing to that. So what am I saying? Let's focus. Let's focus on building foundation, 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 foundation. Focus on growing with Christ, being with Christ, learning the gospel. Get into a house church. Get into a discipleship process there. You can't be a devoted disciple without studying his word. Amen? Hallelujah. And then, you know what starts to happen in the parking lot? Sometimes the Holy Spirit. You know when you, you, know when you lost your car? In the parking lot? I got a story one day, but I'll just do another day. I lost my car because I, I flew in out of Terminal A and I landed in Terminal C. And I'm like, I, it was like, right? Wrong terminal. Anyway. And it was cold. All right. So I, I thought the car was stolen. There. And anyway, anyway. So you ever, you ever do this? Tell me you've done this, especially in those parking garages. You don't know where the car is, but you take out your key fob. And you go like, and you hear, whoo, whoo, And you go, oh, there it is. Well, the Holy Spirit has sometimes 
giving me a ooh, ooh, on a car that's been parked because I'm studying and the thing that I parked, I'm studying and then now the Spirit says, oh, you remember the thing that you weren't ready for, the thing you didn't understand? Let's go open the door. This is how I don't have to deny something and say, well, that's not true. No, maybe I just don't understand what that man of God actually really understood. Maybe my maturity level didn't, wasn't ready to receive the prophetic accuracy of what he was talking about. So maybe when you hear Nineveh, you don't know what Nineveh did, why Nineveh is important, what happened in Nineveh, why it points to the gospel, what, what was happening with Jonah, what the, yeah. What, what the connection was with yeah. no sign will be given except the son of Jonah. You don't understand that he was in the whale for three days. Jesus is in the earth for three days. And, and, you know, in, 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 in the deep places of the earth, the Bible says, you know, uh, and what all that means, oh, my gosh, yeah. it'll change your life. So not knowing all these connections, you're like, oh, my gosh, the solar eclipse is going to pass over a city called Nineveh. And there's no foundation whatsoever. Is this making sense? All right, I got to tell you one more thing before we leave. Like, really important. How did Jesus endure the cross? The Bible says in, Re in Hebrews chapter 12 that he endured the cross because of the joy that was beset him. In other words, he was looking forward to the great things that come. You want me to tell you a wonderful thing? The Christian isn't focused on the judgment. The Christian is focused on the restoration of all things. The Bible actually is not going, the end, the end, the end, the end. If you listen to the rhetoric of even the church, especially the world, when is the end? When is the end? When is the end? Listen, the Bible actually doesn't describe it as the end, period. It's saying the end of the age. Ooh, man, now I want to preach. Because what? Because the, the story that has been told you and me in our culture is receive Jesus and so we can like, you know, be like, flip, you know, yeah. taken out of here. And so now we can become like floating cloud-like things, walking on clouds and, <laughs> Is that what the Bible's focus is? The Bible focus is not on the end, it's on the second coming. The end of the age ushers in the second coming of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ then is bringing, listen, restoration to all things in which there is a new heaven, a new earth, a new Jerusalem. The focus of the scripture is not going somewhere. It's the ushering in of the new creation. We have become new creations, but creation's becoming new, and there's going to be this amazing marriage between Jesus and the church, and we're focused on, oh my gosh, the end. Oh man, our eschatology is, how should I say, off, misunderstood. Why? We're not reading the Bible. And lo, I am with you even unto the end of the age. We should be like, all right, come on now, another earthquake. Yes. All right, another war. Okay, he told us. This stuff's sorrowful, but hold on, people. The good thing is coming. Yeah. Endure, church. Greatness is coming. Glory is coming. Hallelujah. You know, a woman... Now, I, I, you, know, you, you know, I joke that, you know, me and Kate had, had children, but, you know, really, she actually birthed them. Yeah. I was just there, yeah. right? Yeah. A woman, if she wants the baby, has to endure the birth pangs. And she's willing to endure the birth. How many, how many mamas here? All right. Whoa, a lot of, a lot of mamas. So you understand birth pangs. But the Bible describes that after the birth pangs, you've got the baby, you forget about the pain. How many can say that? You were taken up with the joy of the new baby. What do you think the Bible is describing to us? Endure. Go through the birth pangs. Oh, hallelujah. Are you okay? You sure? 
Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. You see, if our focus is upon the new creation, then we know what we're living for. We're not, we don't have a mentality of escaping. We have a mentality of laying hold of what God has for us. So should we tremble? Well, yeah. Yeah, we should. But not at the tribulation. At his word. Isaiah 66, verse 2. For all those things my hand has made, and all those things exist, says the Lord. But on this one I will look. On, but on this one will I look. On him who is poor and of a contrite spirit and who trembles at my word. I want you to understand that right now, understand this. Spiritual things move earthly things. Psalm 77, verse 18. It says, the earth trembled and shook at what? The voice of your thunder. <sighs> Acts 4, 31. And when they prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. Acts 16, 26. Suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. Matthew 27, verse 54. So when the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake... And the things that happened, they feared greatly, saying, truly, this was the Son of God. I want to tell you emphatically, the earth is shaking. The signs, it's all part of what Jesus said. So, let's get ready. The Bible says, be ready in season and out of season. Put your life to be fully devoted to him. Tremble at his word and you will tremble at nothing else. Isaiah 13, 11 says, I will punish the world for its evil. <sighs> Revelation 6, 17, for the great day of wrath has come and who is able to stand? It is time, church. I have so many scriptures, but I'm gonna tell you this. Matthew 6, 33, seek first, the kingdom, seek first the kingdom of God and his, and all these things will be, you don't need to be afraid. Good things are coming. Great things are coming. But we need to shift our focus, shift our, whatever you got to do, you pursue God and it is his word that you should be seeking. So I'm going to tell you something crazy. I recommend that you shut off the constant stream of Facebook, YouTube, and social media. And I get in his prophetic word. So that then you'll be able to discern the times. And you won't be deceived. So, build a parking lot. Study. And then let the Holy Spirit bring to you what you need at that hour. But I rather you and I be focused on the first things so that then we're able to handle precept upon precept. Amen? Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. Okay, I have so much more, but like that's it, all right, because it's, <laughs> it's time to go, and, and I believe that you've been um, directed through the scripture with the words of Jesus, and they're gonna help us a lot, amen? amen. So if you ever get afraid, Look from the earth and go, wow, I'm going to set my eyes on heavenly things. Wow, thank you, God. It's the direction of the scripture. It's why they call it good news. Amen? God bless you, Father. We thank you. Lord, we pray that no one will be deceived. Even the elect will not be deceived in that day. Lord, I pray that our priorities will be your priorities. And I pray you give us uh, discernment and understanding. Lord, I pray, God, that every prophetic word, every prophetic, every prophet, everything that you want heralded, everything that is confirming your word that is good, I pray you will establish it in our hearts. I pray that we not as a church reject anything said or done that is of you. But Lord, if there be anything, if there be anything that's off, if there be anything that would be a distraction, if there be anything that would lead us astray, we pray for protection for it. And Lord, I pray, God, that our hearts will seek you, will seek your face. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, we give you thanks and praise. And we all say, 
Amen. God bless you.